Why don't you go ahead and do it? Okay. <laughs> what up and welcome to Boring Reviews. Jody here. Nick here. And today we're reacting to another geography. Now, who are we checking out, Nick, or what country? We are checking out the person and the country <laughs> now named Belgium. And, you know, I don't want to make the waffle joke. I don't know a whole lot about Belgium. Not going to lie. Chocolate. What else is new? There you go. What else is new? Don't know much about it. So that's why we come to Geography Now to react to a little bit of information. Now, this is a B country, so very early on Geography Now. We know the bill's going to be a little shorter. Maybe not as much graphics, but I still enjoy it a whole lot because mm -hmm. they always teach me a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's what, seven years old now? So Seven años. It'll be interesting when they get to the U's. I'm ready for the United States. <laughs> just to see if it's like you know just for you how we feel about it if you like anything about this with. video <laughs> go ahead and like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be aware of our next uploaded videos and don't be afraid to check out some other geography now reactions we have on the channel we quite, quite got quite a few of them we do appreciate the gn people for allowing us to do this here we go Tell you a little story. Once upon a time, France had a son named Wallonia, and the Netherlands had a son named Flanders. One day, a bunch <laughs> of crazy stuff happened in Europe, yada, yada, yada. After all the crazy stuff subsided, Flanders was like, hey, Wallonia. Yeah? Uh, I'm going to move out of my parents' place, and I got this new rad apartment, but I kind of need another guy to help me pay for the rent. I don't know. You're kind of a cool guy, I guess. Uh, would you like to be my roommate? Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Why not? Um, but just for the record, I don't speak any Dutch. Oh, no worries. I don't speak any French. How are you talking to <laughs> And that's how Belgium became a country, kind of. <laughs> Just like that. Just like it's it. Time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. You've all probably at least heard of the name Belgium, and if you have, congrats! That's not enough. Let's dissect the flag. Yes. Ooh. First of all, the flag of Belgium looks like the flag of Germany, not over say. to the left side, but just keep in mind that the color sequence is black, yellow, red, not black, uh. red, yellow. Also, the flag has an unusual proportion of 13 to 15, making it almost a square. The flag's colors are directly correlated to the country's coat of arms, the black representing the shield and determination, the yellow representing the lion and generosity, and the red representing the lion's claws and tongue and the crown, as well as bravery and strength. Speaking of strength, you're gonna need a lot of it to understand this next part. <laughs> If you're gonna learn anything about Belgium, <laughs> the one thing you have to understand is how the country is split up. This is very important, so pay attention, Brandon! <laughs> what? What? How's Bajan? Yeah. Dude, that was like eight episodes ago. First of all, Belgium is located <laughs> in Europe, right under the Netherlands, and northeast of France, right at the foot of the North Sea, next to the English Channel. In the most fundamental way I can put this, Belgium is divided into three regions. The Dutch, or the Flemish-speaking North region, called Flanders, the South, or French Walloon region, called Wallonia, and the capital, Brussels, acts in itself as a third region, and functions in a completely bilingual way. Most of the people in Brussels speak both Dutch and French, however, oh. French is a little bit more prevalent. Got it? Told okay, you. good, because we're not done. Each of the Flanders and Wallonia regions are then divided into five provinces each, making a total of ten provinces. Brussels doesn't count and is considered its own region not belonging to either Flanders or Wallonia, even though technically it's completely engulfed in Flanders. But then again, the region around Brussels has a French administrative area around the city called the BHV, or the Roussel al vivoud County, in which large numbers of French minorities live and can be judged in French, even though it's in Flanders. Still with me? Good, because it gets even crazier. The French also have administrative <laughs> centers in the southeast and the southwest regions of Flanders, and a Wallonian municipal exclave in the West Flanders province called Comine Wartneton, even though most of the people there speak Dutch. Furthermore, the Flemish have one municipal exclave in the Liège province in Wallonia called Bouren. Oh, we're just getting started though. Then you have the German-speaking minority in the east of Wallonia in the Liège province, whom are making propositions to create an 11th province called Upton saint -Bie. Speaking of Germans, Belgium has a lot, and I repeat, a lot of weird territorial claims and boundaries. For one, there are technically five German exclaves hidden right along the border of the Liège province in East Belgium. However, these exclaves are only separated from mainland Germany from a Belgian train track, the Venban, which is no longer in use. This means that you can be in Germany and only have 10 meters between you and Belgium between you go back into Germany. The smallest of these German exclaves is just a small house near the German town of Kosen with a front yard less than two hectares in area. Oh, but wait, there's more. Then you reach the ever so confusing town of Barl Nassa and Barl Hertog in which there are 22 Belgian enclaves in the Netherlands and eight Dutch enclaves in Belgium, seven of which are counter enclaves 
Netherlands, or a part of the Netherlands in Belgium in the Netherlands. These borders at first make no sense. Apparently, they cross awkwardly through streets, buildings, restaurants, stores, and even houses. A person can literally wake up in one country and shower in the other. The rule is, whatever side your front door is on is the country that you pay your taxes to. Oh. The reason why it's so confusing is because, <laughs> long story short, there was a guy ruling the area called Henry I, Duke of Brabant, who gave parcels of land to Godfrey II of Scholten, who ruled the area to the east, in an attempt to build an alliance so that his enemy Dirk VII wouldn't expand his influence. Long story short, Henry's land became Belgium, and Godfrey's land became the Netherlands. Okay. To this day, the two countries have stayed true to Godfrey and Henry's agreements, and have split the land exactly how they did. That's pretty cool. That's I mean, impressive, yeah. complicated, oh, wait, we're but not cool. Done just yet. Finally, you have the confusing Lys Rivière Canalari River in the border between the Walloon province of Enut and France. Starting in the town of Halou en France, this river zigzags for about 26 kilometers with multiple river islets and land pieces that act as penne enclaves until it all stops in the town of Armentières. Each side has an equal seven enclaves each along the river. Okay, now let's talk about the landscape. That has got to be so extremely confusing. Yes. For, I mean, maybe not people that live there because they're used to it, but try to explain that to anyone that no. comes to visit or family or whatever. Like, oh, so you're, you're part of Germany or you're part of France, but we're in Belgium. And, you know, Belgium seems to be divided into two, but then you have Brussels right there. And this is uh, Flanders, but a whole lot of that's from France. And, and not just that, but the one where, speaking. like, the territory line goes through your house. Yeah, like, those little stones or whatever. I'm curious, is that house, like, if you were to try to sell it, would like a lot of people want it just for the fact that it's in two countries or is it like a, yeah. oh, I don't the market value bothered. of those homes high or low yes, because, because of, that of that fact that'd be interesting and it'd be funny like you can do like i'm sure it doesn't happen but like a funny little skit where a person like jumps one stone is in one country and there's a customs guy like falling around like no nope, yeah, yeah yeah okay go ahead jumps again wait passport, passport. yep yep <laughs> okay now let's talk about the landscape mostly flat outside the cities there's farms and forests it's pretty lush and green however the worldwide fund for nature ranked w Belgium w pretty low in terms of their environmental performance and the water quality was the lowest in the eu mostly due to the high population density belgium isn't really agriculturally driven i mean economically most of their revenue comes from machinery pharmaceuticals diamonds many of which were imported from the congo we'll explain about that in a little bit and service and industry jobs as well okay that's about it moving on <laughs> Now this is where things get really strange. In the shortest way I can put this, Belgium is kind of like an artificial country with technically no distinct form or identity in which two regions kind of became roommates and the respective communities have a government with the same power as the central government. Huh, and you thought Andorra was confusing with that whole co-principality thing. Brother, please, I'm Belgium. Sit down, I'm gonna give you a lesson in complication fanatics. First of all, Belgium has a little less than 11 million people and oh. about 57%, the slight majority of people are Flemish from Flanders, about 42% are Walloon from Wallonia, 1% German from the German community. Keep in mind, although it's debatable, the terms Flemish and Walloon are more in reference to linguistic communities and not ethnicities. By definition, you could have a Congolese guy in Liège identifying as a Walloon and a Moroccan guy in Antwerp identifying as a Fleming. As long as they speak the languages and become citizens, that's pretty much it. In terms of race, though, about 77% of the people identify as ethnically Belgian and the remaining 23% identify as non-Belgian in Jeez. origin. Some of the largest groups being Moroccans, Italians, Turks, and even Congolese from the Democratic Republic of Congo, as it was a former Belgian colony, along with Rwanda and Burundi, which is where a lot of the diamonds we talked about earlier come from. The Belgians even took over a small part of China for a couple decades in the 20th century oh, in snap. Tianjin, after quickly giving it back, and to this day, pictures from the Belgian Chinese colony are some of the rarest photos you can find in historical archives. As we mentioned, Belgium has three distinct regions, Flanders, Walloon, and Brussels. However, regions weren't enough, and so Belgium decided to split things up even more into communities. Due to the German-speaking minority, predominantly in the southeast, Belgium created a semi-mediary third community, even though only 1% of the country actually speaks German, less than the amount of people in Belgium who actually speak Arabic, and has instituted three separate governments and parliaments, one for each language group, the what? Dutch, French, and German. Each of these governments actually has just as much power as the central government. Wait, what? On top of that, the French and Dutch communities are allowed to provide cultural and social services 
taxes to the citizens in Brussels, but not in the other region. This means that a family living in Brussels could possibly depend upon the central government for taxes, the French government for community centers, the Dutch government for schools, and the Brussels government for the police force. Four governments acting at once. And then you have a king. Long story short, Belgium became a constitutional monarchy that started in 1830 with Philippe I as the current head of state. They are the only monarchy in Europe with no actual crown or lavish robes and scepters. They gained independence from the Netherlands. Mm. French-speaking Wallonia joined along and then they chose a German prince to become their first king. In terms of culture, Belgium can <laughs> be attributed to a lot of things. For once, some of the world's most renowned surrealist artists came from Belgium, like René Magritte. Cartoons like the Smurfs and my homeboy, Tintin. I have read almost every single one of those comics. Ain't nobody mess with Tintin. That dude is mad boss. The national dish is mussels <laughs> with french fries and mayonnaise. Belgians will tell you that fries originated from Belgium. And of course, waffles. They make some of the best chocolate in the world that rivals Switzerland. And of course, everyone's favorite Belgian, Jean-Claude yeah, Van Damme. Jean -Claude. the headquarters of the EU and are typically called upon to help Europe administer their diplomatic affairs. Affairs with other countries we'll discuss in... I didn't realize the EU was in Belgium. Oh, Belgium, Belgium, Belgium. When will you learn? First of all, Belgium is a... The, like, the headquarters or something? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize either. I thought, I thought you didn't realize that Belgium was part of the EU. No, but... no, no, the headquarters. Yeah. I, didn't realize... I had forgotten that Jean-Claude Van Damme was uh, Belgium. Belgian? Not what? Belgium. I don't know, because some are Dutch and some are French. Yeah. No. It's a Tell very us. neutral country after gaining independence from the Netherlands. Belgium quickly rose to become one of the leading powers of the industrialized Europe world, and it was a founding member of both the EU and NATO. This means that since day one, Belgium has had a huge entourage of affiliates that they've kind of kept close. However, some are still closer than others. The UK has always been a good buddy of Belgium since they played a pivotal role in the independence of Belgium. The US is also a good friend, and to this day, they still commemorate the Battle of the Bulge, in which the US played a huge role in during the liberation of Belgium in World War II. The only country that might have a little bit of a distaste towards Belgium might be the Democratic Republic of Congo, as they were occupied and became a colony for a little less than a century. Belgium kind of did a lot of things to the Congo. Although tensions are generally eased off a bit today and numerous Congolese people immigrate to Belgium yearly, there's still a somewhat aversion that lingers on in the back of each Congolese mind when history is brought up. Of course, as you would guess, France is a close friend too, whom not only played a role in Belgium's independence, but also culturally resonates with the South Walloon region as well. The Netherlands is a close friend as they jive well Naturally. with the Flanders region, despite the fact that they have a somewhat friendly rivalry with each other. Over the years, many referendums have actually passed in Belgium in which they almost considered re-annexing themselves back to their respective neighboring countries, the Netherlands and France. However, they just can't seem to do it, even though the sense of nationalism is kind of weak, except during soccer games in which they go all out Belgian pride, they still can't seem to let go of each <laughs> other for some weird reason. In terms of their best friend, friend though, they would probably consider Luxembourg. Luxembourg is kind of seen as like the little brother of Belgium and has been there with Belgium since the very beginning. They were even for a short while part of Belgium after independence and their own monarchs, Philip I and Grand Duke Henry, are actually cousins too. In conclusion, Belgium is disputedly the most confusing politically engineered country in all of Europe and by all means it makes no sense how they've kept it together for almost 200 years, but they actually did somehow. Belgium, we dip our fries and mayonnaise to you. Stay tuned. <laughs> Belize is coming up next. Um, the fries and mayonnaise sounds disgusting. Dip our fries to you. Yeah, yeah. but you like fry sauce and other like half true. mayonnaise. But it's also interesting to have mussels with fries. I wouldn't normally pick those two together. Um, but yes, so confusing. The territory, the government. It. I mean, it's amazing that they've made it work, but. Well, you know, I didn't realize they were as a newish country as they are, as new as they are. You know, we always hear about America, baby country, baby country, founded in, 19, in 1776. But he said 200 years ago. So that's that's pretty interesting that they just say, you know, let's just uh, form our own country. You you, you want to be roommates? Well, okay. I, I was really curious if there was going to be like an official language, but nothing like that was said. So I guess really half the country speaks French and half the country speaks Dutch and their taxes go to wherever area they're in. It's it's interesting. I can't help but think when they say Flanders, Ned Flanders. I, I knew you were gonna say Simpsons. I, I, I wonder if there's some Oakley Doakley signs no. around no. there in no. northern Belgium. No. But no, that's that's very interesting. I, I always learn a lot, but man, I learn a lot in this one. Um, again, we we really appreciate not that geography now now even knows about us, but we appreciate their content. 
Um, the audience really enjoys it, and we enjoy it um, probably even more. Let us know what country you want us to react to next. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, goodbye.